Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is Mick Spears. Mick is the best-selling author of the book called You're, You're a Leader, Now What? The Proven Path to High-Performance Leadership. Uh, he's also the founder and principal of The Leadership Project uh, and The Leadership Project Podcast. If you're watching here on the YouTube channel, you can see the logo on his shirt and the book in the background. Um, I've also had the pleasure of working with Mick as a student at self-publishing school, and it's been cool to see his, his journey um, with his book since uh, I remember you all the way from Author Advantage Live uh, virtual back in 2021, I guess, and then just see that week by week through group coaching calls and do all that, see the book come to life. And then now as, at the time of recording this episode, uh, a couple weeks removed from the launch. So kind of a fun uh, full circle moment. So Mick, welcome. Great to have you here. Uh, it's uh, just a great pleasure to be here, Chandler. You've been so instrumental in what I've done in the last uh, year and a half. And it's just great to be here talking to you face to face and share the story with your audience. So great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to hear more about it. Um, so first off, let's start with, if I'm remembering correct, I feel like right about the time that, that you showed up to Author Advantage Live, you, would, you either had just quit your corporate job or you were about to quit your corporate job and you were going all in on this book. Can you tell the story of just how that happened and then why quit your job and why go all in on this book and this business? Oh, that's such a great question, Chandler. And it's a story that kind of builds. So everything actually started with the podcast. And with the podcast, I started the podcast with a, a very important reason. And that is that we're seeing this thing called the great resignation out there, right? So, and we're seeing all time lows of engagement in the work space. And people have had enough. That's You can call it the great protest, call it whatever you like. But we're having a leadership crisis in the world. When you lead, uh, read uh, reports from people like Gallup, you see that only 20% of people in the world truly love their job and like their boss. And I thought something had to be done about that. In my corporate gig, what I used to do is I used to work in the area of urban mobility. And I used to de-stress the way people would commute to and from work. That was what was my dri driving uh, passion and all of these things. And then it dawned on me that the stressful part was actually the bit in the walls. So I decided I needed to do something about it. Then I got into the podcasting. I was having these amazing conversations with leaders around the world that wanted to challenge what it meant to be a leader. And that led me into coaching. And I got coaching certifications with the International Coaching Federation. And the more I got into this, more I got into what we call a flow state. Every time I was talking about leadership, I felt myself having this amazing joy and fulfillment. I loved my corporate job. I was in corporate life for 30 years and it had purpose and meaning. This just seemed to have more purpose and meaning. And then I thought, okay, I've got to do something about this. And then I thought, well, what other way, what other vehicles can I do use to get the message out there? And the book was a big part of that. So I started writing the book with an idea of a business in mind, but not a fully executed plan. And then by the time the book was finished, I've now got my own leadership academy and I've left corporate world uh, four, four months ago. And now I'm full time on the leadership project. Yeah. Mm, okay. That's right. That's right. So by the time you came to Author Advantage Live, had you started writing the book? Were you in the early stage of the process? Where were you at? I, I was pretty much at outline. So cool. uh, I, I was already a student of SPS mm -hmm. before Author Advantage Live. Mm -hmm. And then with Author Advantage Live, that was like the, <laughs> that was the injection I needed to go. I'm not even going to say double down. It was at least triple or quadruple down. And from that moment onwards, everything accelerated like mm -hmm. nobody's business. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and so I guess maybe backing up a little bit before then, um, how did you find SBS originally and what, what sparked, why did you say, Hey, I want to work with those guys and come to this event and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm going to say this one was really happen chance. It was, uh, I was, uh, had the thought that, you know what, I should get out there and, and write a book. And then I started looking out at podcasts and I came to SPS through the SPS podcast. That was how oh, I first cool. found you. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then when I did all of my research, because I, I, I take these decisions seriously, is this the organization I want to deal with? Everything I found told me that this was a culture 
and an mm. environment that I wanted to be part of. And here I am. Cool. That's awesome. Full circle moment. Um, that's a lot of fun. What was, um, so you decide on, you say, Hey, I, I've got this passion around leadership. I'm lighting up when I talk about this topic. Um, and I want to go more into this topic. Why, why a book though, of all the things that you could do, what, what was, what was the reason to say like, Hey, I definitely want to write a book on this. Yeah, there's multiple reasons, but the first one is definitely to maximize my impact. It's to get the message out there to as many people as I can. The podcast I do is great, uh, very popular, get a lot of downloads. That helps a lot. Podcasts are consumed by one audience. We have a YouTube channel and we do short curated videos on the YouTube channel. That's another audience. We're just about to start doing TikTok. That's another audience. And for me, the book was about reaching to an audience of people that are really serious about doing something about their leadership craft, whether it be someone that wants to improve their own personal leadership, or as it turns out, many people that are reading the book are people that are mentoring the next generation of leaders, and they're finding it to be a valuable resource to understand what's going through the emotions of a new leader, someone that's newly been appointed and is really struggling with that transition. So many of the readers are new leaders, but the uh, I'm going to say the vast majority of people that are reading the book and commenting about it are people that are mentoring the next generation of leaders. Oh, interesting. And, and I'll, add, yeah. I'll add something else actually, Chandler, because this was important. That's how it starts, maximize impact. But then there was something that you said, I think it might have been it, author advantage live or it might have been before that that i can never unhear i've heard it once and i'll never unhear it and that is that a book is like a business card that someone can't throw away so when they've got that book there's always that reminder of not just the message but then also hopefully to drive business towards the leadership project so that we can continue to do what we do that's awesome mick thanks for sharing that I was just taking a note on that. Um, I love the way you articulated that. So what was the toughest part of uh, the writing process and the toughest part of getting uh, your book written? You, it seems like you've turned it around in a relatively short timeline. Yeah, so uh, Go to Woe was eight months by the time I went, yep, I'm definitely going to do this. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've worked out that I think I can do the next one and the next one after that even uh, quicker. And I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm going to say the two hardest parts are the bookends, pardon the pun, getting started and getting finished. And I'll explain that a little bit more. So getting started, I'm going to openly say it without the support of you, the SPS process, the training that I received from your amazing faculty and the support from your amazing community. We need to talk about that. That is something special you've got there. Without that process, I wouldn't have got started. So I'm talking about the mind map the outline, all of those things, I would still have that book in my head and it wouldn't be on paper if it wasn't for that process that got me started. And the next hardest part was finishing. And what do I mean by that? I'm, I've got an insatiable curiosity, Chandler. I, I learn new things all the time. I'm reading, I'm listening, I'm reflecting in my own mind about different leadership concepts, etc. So for the last several months, I'm going to say for the, I'm going to say the last three months, what I was doing was tinkering. I was walking around, I'd be listening to a podcast, I'd be thinking, and I'd go back to my desk and go, oh, I've got to put that in the book. And what started out as a 45,000 word manuscript turned into 63,000 words. And the only way that I was able to get this book published and out there was that, and it was with the hope of help of my coach, Aaron Schaefer, you know, Aaron, he's amazing. He was on the, he was on the podcast very recently with the help of Aaron. I reset my mindset, go, well, you know, what? got another 82 books to write after this. There's a reason for the number 82, by the way, got another 82 books to write after this. All of those thoughts that keep coming to your head are perfect research for book two, book three, book four, book five, etc. So now what I have is a, both a physical and a digital library that when those ideas pop into my head, I then park those for fodder for, for future books. And if it wasn't for that, the book wouldn't be out on the streets today. 
That's great. How did you, um, so you said that the, 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 the toughest part was getting started and then getting finished. Um, what would, uh, how did you ultimately navigate that, that final piece? Cause I think there's probably a lot of people listening who haven't started yet. Um, mm. and, and, and so for, for them, maybe it's okay. I've like, I've got to, I've got to punch through that wall and whether it's booking a call with our team, like creating a plan, come, uh, talk about and, and, and published, uh, you need a why and you need a why now. Um, and yeah. then when you're, unless your why now is strong enough. So you obviously, how did you get to that why now? And then how did you get through that second hardest part of like getting it to actually published? Yeah. Okay. So how I got through the uh, why now was very easy for me. The process helped me to get the mind map out and the outline, but my why was always really clear. Having said that, uh, although, you know, I've got, uh, engine engineer by background, long-term I'm an engineer, but a lot of the time that I've spent in my career have been in, in executive management roles and quite often in a marketing element. So, so the marketing was very familiar to me. And then when I landed in SBS and I started reading about things like, you know, document your avatar, get into the mind of your avatar. Where do they hang out? What is their problem? What is their current state? What is their desired state? What does the transformed uh, avatar uh, look like? All of these things were like music to my ears because that's what I've done in a lot of my roles in, in marketing. So populating that and getting that down on the sheet of paper really helped. And, and I've got two avatars. In fact, one's named Rachel and one's named Sean. You might find those names very familiar. Uh, Chandler, they're, uh, they're almost mimics of people in your team. <laughs> uh, so one's named Rachel and one's named Sean. And I thought about everything about them and I documented them, that printed it out. And every time I was writing the book, I kept on getting back to the avatar. And this is really key also to get finished and to make sure that the content is rich. When you've got a 30-year uh, career and, and any other authors out there that are just starting please keep in this in mind. You will forget things that are just human nature to you now that your avatar doesn't know. So you're not talking to someone that's at the same level as you. You've got to wind your way back. So when you're writing a book like I was writing, which was for a first time leader, you need to get yourself into the head and empathize with that first time leader that is going through that transformation. And the don't assume knowledge. You need to put some of the basics in there to ensure that they, they get it. You can't just jump in and go, right, now I'm going to talk about the psychology of decision-making without going through some basics that lead up to there. So I'm going to say the mind map, the outline, the avatar, all of these things helped me get into the mindset to make sure that I was creating a book that would be impactful. And then leading towards the end, same thing. When I was starting to write this additional, more advanced content, I kept on thinking to myself, well, hang on a second, is my avatar ready for that? And sometimes the answer was no. Mm. So, so second, then, book. second book, third book, fourth mm -hmm. book. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got there, Chandler. Mm. Yeah. That's great. And I think that's a really great distinction because it's very easy when you get to that part of the process, say, oh, I got to add this and I got to add this and I got to add this. But if you did the work at the very beginning of the process, what you did and got clear on the four P's, right? Person, pain, promise, price. So mm -hmm. who's the person that I'm writing to? What's the pain that they have that they know that they have? And then what's the promise that I can make to them through this book? When stuff starts popping in that's outside of that person, pain, or promise, it's like, oh, great, that's more advanced. That's for a future book, um, yes. which is easy to say. It's a hard thing to do in the moment because uh, we want to include everything in there. Um, so I think that's a good distinction. Let's shift forward, uh, Mick, to uh, the launch side mm. of things. Uh, you're fresh off the launch of your book. Um, how did you launch the book? And then what were the top two or three things um, that sold the most copies? Yeah. So, uh, launch. I launched it before I even had my own physical copy. I just wanted to, to get it out there. I trusted uh, Rachel. She did a wonderful job in the done for you services in your team to make sure that the book was quality and, and we got it out there. And then I followed the launch process and Aaron, he's a gem. Uh, I, I, I know he was on the episode talking about this recently, but we did the launch team with the three tiers that he talks about 
hey, do you just want to buy the book? Would you like to buy the book and leave a review? Or would you like to buy the book, read, uh, leave a review and help us promote it? So we did the whole launch team thing. And the launch team was amazing. We had a, a webinar where we did a, a worldwide launch with you know some nice uh, promo videos and all of these kind of uh, things. And we had more than 100 people register and, and about 50 something turn up to the, the launch, which was which was really nice. So followed all of that process through and uh, launch team was huge. Uh, we've, we're up to 27 reviews now. The launch team is about 130 people. So we've still got some more reviews to go, but, but we're very happy with that. Uh, sales have been great. We went to number one in six categories. We've achieved the bestseller uh, banner. All of those things have gone wonderfully and it continues to go. Then what's happening behind that is, is then, this is when the book promos are coming in. Uh, so I'm, I'm the next wave, I think Aaron used that same term when he was on the podcast as well. The next wave is going to be around uh, those promos. The big message here for everyone, I'm going to say that the number one thing for me was my network, my network. And I underestimated this. I underestimated this with my, with my business and with the book Chandler. I went out and I did personal reach outs to people that I haven't seen for years i'm talking 20 years in some cases and these are people that have bought books in some cases they've bought books uh, for themselves and their executive leadership teams etc cetera, etc cetera. i've had people that used to be direct competitors against me in my previous businesses that have bought the book for their entire executive leadership team and the reason for that is because i invest in relationships um, one thing that I've done over the 30 year career is I've built up this network of people that I know, like, and trust, and I believe know, like, and trust me. And I think authors sometimes, if this can be the message that I give to people, I think we sometimes get shy about reaching out to people and say, Hey, I've written a book or whatever, because we, we think that it's somehow big noting ourselves or, or whatever the case may be. But the mindset I want you to think about, and I think I got this one from you as well, Chandler, by the way, I listen a lot to you. So um, I think I got this one from you is I thought, all right, I haven't seen this person for 20 years. And if they wrote a book, I'd want to know. So why be shy about yeah. telling them? So it can be as simple as saying, you know, hey, Stacey, haven't seen you in years. By the way, I've written a book and I thought you'd want to know. Uh, no pressure, but if you want to take a look and I'd love to hear your feedback, bang. And then they write back, so glad to see you, Mick. Oh, that's amazing. I've always wanted to write a book. That's that's mm. something that I they often come back. I've always wanted to write a book as well. So proud of you. Yes, I've just bought a copy. So don't underestimate the power of your existing network. Get out there. It, it was hard work, but I'm mm. going to say it's high yield. Yeah. I do all I do all of the other things too, Chandler. I've got convert kit and I've got mailing lists and I've got my social presence, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm gonna tell you the the thing that had the biggest yield was the personal email when I sent it to someone. When yeah. I and I'm not talking, you know, form factor uh, kind of emails here. I'm talking about yeah. remembering something about them and saying, Hey, how you know, how is your your daughter? I remember she loved softball, you know, all of these things. That's what yielded the biggest result. Mm, that's powerful. Uh, and I, I, it's, it's easy to underestimate the one-on-one -on -one outreach and the person-to-person -person contact. And I can't tell you how many, I mean, you've probably heard this from other guests on the podcast too, of just people going through their phones and just one by one texting people. And, and that's actually been a surprising common denominator that I don't think I've actually ever done, um, come to think about it. I, I probably should have. Um, but as, as I've heard from multiple people who just went through their contacts on their phone and just, you know, a text is going to have a hundred percent open rate <laughs> um, yeah. pretty much um, and uh, or 97%, whatever it is. And, and so just that, that, uh, that quick text to people in your network. Spot on Chandler. Yeah, that's it. And uh, by the way, it's from a place of authenticity because yeah. then I'm catching up with people I haven't seen in 20 years, which has yeah. been wonderful as well. So that's cool. That's it. That's an awesome side benefit. What um, can you speak to? I feel like you've done a great job of sharing the journey, um, which is something that we teach, but it's, uh, I just feel like you've done it in a unique way of like 
pictures with your son and like opening your book and uh, just like getting your cover back and all that stuff. Can you speak about how you were intentional about that and just kind of how that worked? Yeah, that's also just comes from a place of authenticity. I'm just in such a, a, a state of flow and enjoy uh, all the time. And my family have been so amazingly supportive of me, my wife, my, my sons, and they're part of the journey. And, and for everyone out there, books don't write themselves, right? So it might be the, the author's name that is on the cover, and it might be the author's words that are in between. But unless they've got a good support environment around them, it still doesn't happen. So my wife, say, my, my son, Thomas, my son, Henry, all of them make accommodations along the way. So they are part of it. I consider that, that this is their book just as much as it is mine. So then when all of those little milestones happen, we share them together. And what you see when we post on uh, on Facebook and on uh, LinkedIn of, of Thomas grabbing the book and you know wearing it like a hat and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's just moments of joy that we've, uh, we've collected and shared with the world. And not that intentional, those are the posts that turn into some kind of explosion. I, I, I think the last time I looked at the post that I'm talking about where, where Thomas is wearing the, the, the book as a hat, he's 18 months old. He can't even read, but he loves the book and he plays with it and all that kind of stuff. And we, we just take photos and videos of that. It's had more than 11,000 views that post on LinkedIn. And oh like, gosh. um, yeah. I'm going to say more than 200 likes and 60 comments, something it's mm -hmm. people like to see a little bit of a glimpse of your world, not yeah. just your professional output. Mm. Mm. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, what, uh, what, what's what been the most, you're part of our author advantage accelerator program. What's been the most helpful part um, of that program? Oh, it's hard to pick. The done for your services are amazing. It takes a lot of pressure off you um, as an author in fact, as a leader, one of the things that's really powerful is self-awareness and for you to understand what you're good at and what you're not good at, and then surround yourself with people that compliment you so that you can be good at what you do. You can bring your superpower to the table and excel at that. And when you come into uh, things that you're not familiar with, surround yourself with people that are good at that thing. And the done for your services are an example of that, Chandler. Now, is it possible to do everything yourself? Of course. But you're talking about someone who is trying to write a book and then they're getting told, oh, you've got to navigate your keywords for Amazon and you've got to calculate this and you've got to work out how to use KDP and you've all of these things. You've got to get a, a book cover designed. You've got to get a, a blurb done. The blurb is probably in the author's wheelhouse, but you know what I mean, right? So the, there's all of these skill sets that are around having a book that authors don't always have and that can be a big moment of stress and anxiety for them so i'm going to say that done for your services would be key but the other one i've, I've already touched on it, is the community this community that you and sean sumner have built it's amazing sean i've i've almost never met and a group of people that are so supportive of each other and in the Facebook community through to our weekly calls with you and, and Sean on our Zoom calls together. There's such a camaraderie and support environment, a challenging support environment where people will push you and say, yeah, 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 do this or, or have you thought of this, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the community would be the second one that I'd, I'd point towards. That's awesome. And shout out to Sean, who's done an awesome job. Um, building uh, building a, a community of, of like-minded people that support each other and gen genuinely want to help and, and yeah. seek to add value first, which I think is just such a huge, huge thing. Um, Mick, what would be your kind of uh, your parting piece of advice uh, for the Mick from how many ever months or years ago before writing your first book um, and all the other Micks out there who are thinking about and about to go on their journey of writing their book? Yeah, uh, good question. The, the two words do it you can do it there's there's no doubt that you can do it get some help get some help to help you navigate and that will be the the impetus that gets you going once you're going it's all you but get some help around you people with proven processes like sps that can really help you break it down 
and get going. And once you get going, momentum builds and momentum is amazing. So I wish I had have started earlier without any doubt, Chandler. And then there's that bit at the end of you don't need to tinker, just finish, mm. think about your avatar and, and get it out there. And the other one, I'll, I'll, I'll share this. I'll share this carefully because I've never experienced this one, but I know how prevalent it is. So I'm, I feel like I'm talking to an audience with, uh, with not a feeling of exactly how they feel. And that's imposter syndrome, um, Chandler. It's the more and more I research this, and by the way, it's my third book is going to be about imposter syndrome. The more and more I research imposter syndrome, the more prevalent I realize it is. It's, it can be as high as 90% of people have some level of imposter syndrome. I'm going to tell you that you've got a, you've got a story inside you and you've, it's worth sharing. It really is worth sharing. So the sooner you can get past that question of, oh, yeah, but who would want to hear from me? We want to hear from you. So get past that as soon as you can and share your story with the world. That's awesome. That's inspiring, Mick. Um, what would be, um, well, I guess, um, final kind of related, you said to get help. Um, what would be your advice or um, just feedback for someone who's thinking about working with us at self-publishing school? Well, book your call, book your call with Aaron. Uh, the, the rest of the team is amazing, but Aaron is a superstar. Book your call and get going and, and talk, talk through it. I mean, these people are coaches. They're, they're not just there to help you to write a book. They're, they're coaches. They coach you through the process. They coach you through your mindset. So go ahead and, and book that call and come in with an open mind, right? So get ready to have an open mind. And I think Aaron's term the other week on the podcast was be coachable. Mm, yeah. Get ready. You, you're bringing your special gift to the table. Then let SPS and Aaron and Chandler and all of the team, let them bring their special gift to the table. And that's when with an open mind an open heart and an open will, and that's when co-creation can happen. And co-creation is what? brings magic to the world and brings something to exist existence that doesn't already exist. That's so great. And guys, if you want to book a call um, specifically with Aaron um, to chat about um, working with us at SBS and create some goals for your book and a, and a plan and that sort of thing, you can go to self-publishingschool.com forward slash Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, that's self-publishingschool.com forward slash Aaron. Mick, you're the man. Where can people go um, to buy your book and to find out more about what you're up to? Yeah, great. So Amazon is definitely the, the source for buying the book. You've uh, got the ebook and also the paperback. Paperback sales are going amazingly. We are also doing something at the moment where we're, this is part of that network thing, uh, Chandler. I'm getting so many requests for autographed copies of the book. So we're also taking some pre-ordering of the book if you want a personally signed copy and that would be shipped from us uh, to you uh, where we've done a printing run in china sorry amazon we did a printing run in china to keep our cost down and and we've we've got uh, the ability to send out some signed copies and then for to know more about the business you can go to mixbeers.com and on there we've got some downloadable resources we've got our self-reflection journal big part of who I became as a leader Chandler was practicing self-reflection every day and a bunch of exercises where I I challenged myself I I develop what's called an amalgam leader which is part of the book I develop my ikigai I develop my leadership credo and all of those exercises are in the self-reflection journal you could say it's a complementary kind of thing that goes side by side with the book. So go to mixbeers.com and you can download the self-reflection journal. And there you can also find out about our transformational coaching services and all of the courses that we do around high performance leadership. Right on. Mick, I appreciate you, man. Uh, me too. So uh, a big fan of you and all of your team. And this has been such a great pleasure to come on your show. It's, and like you said, this is full circle because this is how I found you in the first place. Such a fun moment, man. You're inspiring. Thanks, man.